Hello there, today I'm walking along the North Wales coast and I'm hoping to see a very special place that may just be the smallest church in Britain. I'm not far from Llandidno and I'm hoping to see St Trislod's Chapel in Rose-on-Sea. I say hoping to see, um, it's pretty likely as the door to this lovely little place is open most days of the year and I'm hoping it is today because it's a bit drizzly, um, but I'm hoping to have a look inside. I'm just outside of uh, Roson Sea near Llandidno. Um, Roson Sea has a Welsh name as well, which is called Llandrillo and Ros. Now, Llandrillo, um, Llan, if you see that, um, you'll see it before many, many Welsh place names. A Llan is basically the word for an enclosure around a church. Um, and then the thing following it is usually the name of the, the saint or the, the person it's dedicated to. Uh, so Llandrillo and Ros means basically the religious enclosure or, or place of Trisha um, on the heath, which is what uh, Ross means. So let's go and see if we can look inside. You'll be able to see the tiny building standing here behind me. Uh, the building that you can see um, dates from around the 16th century and is thought to have been built by the monks of Aberconwy Abbey, not far from here. Um, but St Trisha was actually an early 6th century saint from, from uh, Brittany. Um, so he came over here and is thought to have um, stayed here as a hermit for a number of years before going on to his final resting place of Anis Enchi, Bardsey Island, which is off the end of the Llyn Peninsula. Now, uh, Bardsey and Anisenti is a very, very special place and has been for years and had a lot of pilgrimage, pilgrimages going to it under the pilgrim's route because it was also said to say uh, Bardsey, Anisenti, the island of 20,000 saints. Um, this was the equivalent of going to Bardsey three times was the equivalent of a trip to Rome. I won't say too much um, as we go inside, as this is still a place where people come to have a bit of quiet space. Um, but as you'll see, there's only room for six, about six people in here. So we'll go in and take a look inside. So that's about the size of it, really. Um, I'll just um, say a few things on the, the outside. Um, as I'll have gone inside, underneath the altar, you may have seen um, a little hatch or opening. Um, that underneath there, if you, it's still, you can still open it up, um, is an old holy well. And it's thought that that's why St. Shishla decided to build his cell here in the 6th century uh, when he was living here, because there was a source of fresh drinking water. Um, the chapel itself is, is incredibly tiny. I mean, I could just about maybe lie down in there um, sideways if I so desired. Um, it's, it's an incredibly small space. Um, but actually, the building we see, um, as well as it being a bit later than when St. Trisha lived here as a hermit, um, it's also been restored um, and with a new roof and the walls have been restored in the 1930s. So when the building or parts of the building were restored in the 1930s, um, the building was also re-consecrated um, and the holy well inside is also thought to have really special um, healing powers and has, has actually been used throughout the parish um, for baptisms and um, you know, services and things like that um, over many, many years. And the place here is still a place that's kind of opened its doors for people to come and um, have a quiet place, a um, place of contemplation, um, and is still regularly used um, by the community.
record of the building having on the inside um, beautiful wall paintings of sacred items. Um, they no longer exist, so who knows what those sacred items were. But you'll have also seen the two tiny windows with stained glass of the two saints inside there too. Um, and it really is just a lovely little place to come and, and have a look at and, and spend some time here. Um, it's, I think, 11 or 12 feet by 8 or 9 feet, something like that. Um, the walls are two foot thick, and I suppose they had to be. You'll see the big buttresses down um, on the, uh, the sides here too. Um, because we're right by the sea, we're like just a stone's throw, literally, away. Um, so we'd have really had to withstand the elements, um, much as I am doing now as the rain starts to come in. So um, I do say that if you are in the area, it's absolutely worth a visit to see what is thought to be Britain's smallest church. So if you've enjoyed this little video and you'd like to hear any more adventures from me, please do click on the subscribe button and uh, I'll let you know when I've next visited somewhere interesting and exciting, just like this gorgeous little place in North Wales. Thanks, bye-bye.